Okay, let's just keep working through our measures here. Some 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 more measures, just so you can become familiar with how you can um, create these. Okay. Now the very first thing I want to do, I'm going to add add a bit of bit more uh, another technique to this particular video, uh, where we're going to create a measure group. Okay. So let's just create this quickly, so you. Um, so you know how to create these and this is this is purely to organize your measures okay and so i'm going to go um, first of all to the home ribbon go enter data and then i'm going to put absolutely nothing in the table and i'm going to start by creating a table name called key measures you can create whatever you like here i just like the name of key measures because it just is a really good stage one of where to put all my initial core measures i like to think of them and so I create that with nothing in it. And then what I do is I uh, click on the measures that I've created and I'm going to change the home table. Okay. And I'm going to change it to my key measures table. Then I'm going to grab total sales. I'll move that in as well. Then I'm going to delete this column here because it's irrelevant. So I'm just going to delete it. And then I'm going to click this um, panel pane in once and click it out. And then now you'll see that the key measures is a what I deem a measure group and it sits up the top of this field section. And so what you'll find is that you could eventually have a lot of these and uh, it's best to start, you know, start getting this into your, um, you know, into your development workflow as, as soon as you possibly can, because you'll start off with these, these sort of core measures key measures and then you'll quickly branch out into these more complex measures and you'll want to be grouping them so that it's easy to go and reference them in the future okay now we've created this is what's called an iterating function but we'll cover a bit more here some of the simple aggregating functions okay because no matter what calculation you are doing i want you to be doing it with um, a DAX measure okay no matter how simple and this is just some simple stuff to start off with okay it's best to start as simple as possible because um, the the beginnings of anything advanced inside of Power BI especially from an analytical perspective starts simple okay it starts with just getting a hang of DAX measures and just writing them as quickly um, as you possibly can and getting familiar with the with how how you can do it okay so we've got a, we've got a range of different just random slices here and that's cool this is this is absolutely fine um, we can we can just um, carry on down this path um, just to highlight you know how, how these work but you know don't get too hung up on whatever filters or slices you've got because it doesn't matter these will all like, calculate something in, in, in front of you okay so the first thing I'm going to do so we've, we've covered some right so I won't cover that um, again but I'll go through some of the other ones that we we could calculate okay so I'm going to go um, new measure here and the one thing to note with creating new measures is that they will land they will land in whatever table you are selected in before you go and create the measure okay so you want to be either selected in on the key measures um, uh, like header or even on one of the individual measures and then it will land inside of that that, that group okay and then so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to calculate a really simple uh, calculation just using average so um, you know this is something you'll be really familiar with average right returns the mean uh, arithmetic mean um, of the numbers in a column so I'm just going to use the really one the one we've already got the quantity column and then close off my brackets you'll see here that I'm leaving spaces between um, the um, a space after and before the brackets as you close it off this is just a personal preference I would recommend it but um, it doesn't matter if you don't do it so just push into there and then I'm dragging it into my table and we can see what the results are there. So you see here what you what you what we'll probably find is they're actually all the same as the total quantity um, probably because uh, there's you know we're only purchasing this product at one one time but that was the amount that we purchased at that one time. So that's why they they're quite similar. Then um, you know we, let's just have a look at a few other ones. Let's just create another measure. Um, you know you can also do things like min quantity as well could do min quantity um, and we could just go min you know we could also use max as another really simple one so these are just these, these like really simple ones you can get get you get going on very very quickly okay what I want to do is I want to calculate up something called total transactions 
and this is an, another great formula to, to add to the repertoire early on. It's called count rows. Okay, count rows here. So what I can do is I can count up how many sales there are uh, or how many transactions they are. Basically, we're just counting up how many rows are in the sales table. And we always have to consider in the current context because you've got to remember that we've got some filters on, right? So, um, so you see here that it's just one transaction every single time. That's why the average is the same as the as the total quantity. But if we say change things up a little bit, so say for instance we took out this product name column, things would potentially adjust if if, if there was more transactions, you know, per. So because you've got to remember we've filtered it down quite a bit. So if, if I take off some of these, so I'll take off the salesperson. Maybe I'll also take off the the month. So you see here that things are changing quite a bit, right? So this person here, this total set, this with a, with the highest sales, they purchased a quantity of fifty one of us. On average, they purchased for in from a transaction perspective one point eight nine, and um, they had twenty seven total transactions. So you see here when we change the filtering that we have on our um, calculations on our measures, the results change. Okay. And so this is where the, you know this is where the real um, scalability of DAX measures comes in. So I want you to have a really good think about it. Look how simple these these formulas are. I mean, I know this one is probably a bit new to you, but this is technically quite simple. And you know, here we're using count rows. Here we're using a sum. Here we're using average. You know, really common functions that I know you'll be used to. Think about all the different calculations we can get just by changing what's called the context, changing this. The filtering that we are doing to those particular results okay and this is the real power you don't have to rewrite any formulas you can just slice and dice it by multiple different ways because of this great model that you've built right and all of a sudden you have you know just unlimited amounts of information or the ability to really drill down into very specific things very easily okay so one last thing I want to show you is we can actually format these particular um, results, okay, if we needed to. And the way I we can do that is we can select the measure, right? And then you've got a range of different options up here. So I'm just going to click the dollar sign just because I know it's an easy one. So a really common one. But there's, there's many options. You've got a formatting area here. And you've only got to change it once and then it's set like that for the, for the rest um, for, for, for forever. Okay. Let's, um, that's a good overview, I think, and what we'll do is we'll um, move on and just run through, you know, a little bit more around, you know, what you can do within this formula bar, okay, because so hopefully, you know, you've got a good understanding of how important this is, this is, this, this area is, you know, in terms of from, you know, great analysis, this is the most important area, but it builds on top of the other you know, pillars of, of good high quality development inside of Power BI, so don't get me wrong there, but, you know, hopefully you're starting to really get the hang of what this area is all about. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to the next video.